Hello and welcome to Frequently Asked Questions with the CMML staff. As this is a virtual conference and we're all used to Zoom by now, we figured that this might be a great way to answer some of the questions that we receive here at CMML. So as you can see, we have many of the staff here connected. These wonderful, smiling, shiny faces. These are the ones that we get to work together with here at, here at CMML. And they're the best source to go to for the answers to the questions that we have before us today. So we'll, we'll start with, with a few of these and we'll see how, how it goes. So first of all, I'd like to start with just uh, a question of my own and share the vision and mission of who we are as CML. Why do we exist? What's the primary ministry of CML? And the best way to answer that is the saying that we exist to advance the spread of the gospel globally by serving U.S. assemblies and their missionaries. And we do that through engaged senders, enabled servants, and enthusiastic supporters. So that's a quick and easy answer to that question. So I took the easy one. Now the rest of the staff gets to take the difficult ones. So let's start with Phil. Phil, he is responsible for missionary care and assembly relations. Uh, one of the questions is, how does a person who's interested in serving the Lord as a missionary, how do they avail themselves of CML services? Well, thanks, John. And really, it's predicated upon the fact in the belief that the Lord has been leading a prospective worker to uh, cross-cultural service. Uh, and the first and most important step is really to share this vision with the church leadership or elders. And that typically is usually followed by prayer, where the elders are praying about sending a worker, and the worker is praying for continued guidance. There may even be those times when the elders and the uh, worker pray together. And at a point when it becomes apparent to the elders and the Lord confirms the call to both the worker and the elders, a, a letter of commendation is written, signed, and a copy sent to CMML. The, the letter of commendation is really an action taken by a local assembly where the elders and the assembly recognize God's call of one of their very own for a specific ministry. Essentially, the letter of commendation begins the process and becomes an important link with the worker and the sending assembly. That's how uh, a worker uh, can be connected with and receive the services that CMML provides. Great. Thanks, so. <clears throat> so now we'll go to Heather. Heather's the Pella. He's, she's our office manager and deals a lot with our finances here in the office. The so question for you is, how much of a gift sent to the missionaries does CMML take to cover our expenses? So we don't take anything from your donation. 100% of what a donor gives goes to whom they suggested wherever possible. Sometimes if a missionary's account is closed or for some other reason, um, we would then reach out and ask, where else would you like us to send um, your donation? But 100% of what is given goes to where it is suggested. We don't take anything over um, above and beyond for our expenses. So with that being the case, how does CMML cover their expenses? So we are thankful that the funds um, are provided from the generosity of the Lord's people um, through specific donations to CMML, um, to funds that CMML um, designate if somebody um, designates in their will or in their estate that their funds should be left to CMML. We, um, that is one way that we cover our expenses as well as um, receiving funds from our investments. Hmm. Great, and we're so thankful for those believers that uh, send of their means that the Lord has placed upon their, their heart to donate to the operational expenses for CMML. Thanks, Heather. Uh, Alan Coburn. Alan Coburn, right in the middle of my screen. Um, he is our facilities manager. And uh, quick question for you. Can you give a brief description of the CMML facility? Uh, not all of us are actually here physically today, <laughs> but we are connecting remotely via Zoom. Uh, but can you just give us a brief description of the facility here? 
Sure. Uh, the Lord has blessed us with a beautiful facility here. It's located in uh, 17 uh, partially wooded acres with three buildings connected, which makes up about 300, I'm sorry, 36,000 square feet. The original mansion section was built in 1930s, and then there was addition added on in 1940, with modifications done in some areas when we purchased it in the 1970s. It has a total of two family size apartments, 10 hotel room accommodations, 20 bathrooms. This building also includes a recreation meeting room, dining room, parlor, playroom for the boss and others, I'm only kidding, for the children, and library, kitchen, and laundry facility for the missionary use as well. We also have an office complex and a missionary clothing center as well. <clears throat> Great, thanks Al. And Alan and, and Russ Click do a great job of taking care of the facilities here, keeping this place up. And so we're very thankful for them. Jen Evans, uh, she's responsible for donor relations and special projects amongst many other things. So if someone wants to send something here to CMML, what address should they use to send something here? It actually depends on what they're sending. If they're going to send a donation or a letter, um, a book, they can use our PO box uh, address, PO box 13, and that's in Spring Lake. The actual address you can get from our website. The, if they're going to send a box, whether it be to the clothing center or to the office, they should use our location address, which is located here in Wall Township, New Jersey. So any envelopes, one book or smaller, can go to the PO box and other, anything bigger needs to go to uh, the actual address. Yes, please. Street address, great. Thanks, Jen. Let's move on to the clothing center, who we have with us today, Marilyn Risden, who helps out with the management of that. We're so thankful for her work there. A uh, question for you today, what kind of things can we receive at the clothing center that people can ship to us or deliver personally? Thanks, John. Uh, the clothing center serves our missionaries internationally, as well as full-time workers here in the United States. The key of uh, what is most useful uh, would be clothing that is multifunctional. Many of our missionaries have uh, limitations on baggage. They also have families they have to consider when they come to shop free of charge in the clothing center. And the clothing needs to be something that can be uh, used uh, for many different functions in their life. Um, business casual to casual. At the present time, we're phasing out uh, most of our men's suits just because of changing styles and, um, and trends. Many of our missionaries fall in the category of uh, 50 and under. And so uh, a business casual approach to dressing is, is much more practical. Um, we also maintain a clothing center fund and donations that are sent to that are used to purchase items such as uh, men's, men's and children's shoes especially. So if you're uh, at a, a distance and postage is uh, an issue with mailing packages, uh, you can always make a monetary donation that will be used well. If you go to the link on the CMML website under Clothing Center, there's a list of the types of uh, clothing that we use and that uh, we are always in need of receiving. However, at the present time, you'll see uh, a statement at the beginning of that link. And it says that the clothing center has been temporarily closed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. My suggestion would be that you either contact the CMML office or email myself before you send any kind of a package. I'd be very happy to communicate with you and let you know what the, the current status is right now. Thanks so much. <clears throat> All right, let's move from clothing to publications. 
uh, host Sarah Dunlap, our editor of our missions magazine. A question about the magazine. How are expenses for the missions magazine met? So subscriptions to missions are free of charge for U.S. residents. Um, so we trust the Lord to provide the funds needed to produce each issue. Um, we are very thankful for readers who forward gifts to CMML specifically to help with the magazine's expenses. This can be done on CMML's website or by mail um, with a check. Uh, we're so grateful for the generosity of all the Lord's people. Thanks, Sarah. And now let's move to Mary Parsons, our hostess here at the guest house. A question for you, who can stay at the CMML guest house and how much does it cost? Okay, so I'll answer the easy part first. There is no charge for anyone staying at CMML's guest house. Uh, we uh, make a priority for our overseas missionaries. Anyone that's listed in our handbook or um, is a commended worker overseas, they're the top priority. And uh, we really enjoy those missionaries coming <clears throat> from uh, all over to visit us here. Uh, also, um, from time to time, full-time workers, especially those uh, who are traveling through having meetings in the area, uh, they will come and they will stay too, provided that we have the room. Um, sometimes people ask, um, so how many can you accommodate in your guest house? And uh, we're um, sort of that number can wiggle a little bit when we have reaching higher here and lots of kids sleeping on blow up beds and things, we can maybe have as many as 40. Uh, but 20 to 25, I would consider full depending on the number of families or singles or yeah, um, couples that are in residence. So we can be full uh, with about 20 to 25. So how many missionaries come through the guest house in a given year? Obviously that fluctuates. It does fluctuate, and we were trying to pin down uh, some of our numbers. Um, I would say between two and 300 uh, would be on an average, um, uh, an average year. We would have um, uh, some people coming for just maybe a night or two, uh, families coming for uh, a rest time, and um, then others uh, maybe stay for a few months. So uh, depending on on how all well that goes, uh, maybe between two and 300 uh, would be an average. Great, thank you. <clears throat> now, uh, moving over to Craig. Craig Fritchie does conferences, security, and a lot more. Uh, question for you, what can CMML do to help my local assembly foster and cultivate interest in missions? And what kind of resources can you share? Thanks, John. Um, a big piece of what we do uh, with the conferences is we try to bring missions to uh, the communities and to the assemblies around. And uh, a big way that, that people can get engaged in missions and you can encourage missions in your community and your, of assemblies is to attend some of these events. Um, we have about 10 a year and uh, we're hoping that this year we can continue that trend. Uh, another really great way that you can encourage uh, missions in your assembly is to use the video resources that we've been producing. We release a new missions update video every month uh, featuring a different missionary and um, you can download those videos, you can show them in your chapels on a prayer meeting uh, or even the fall conference uh, footage that's going to be up uh, for the conference you can share any of that stuff in your local churches uh, maybe on a thursday night zoom meeting you don't have a speaker you can put up one of our conference speakers and hear about what god's doing around the world and how you can get engaged in that and of course you can get the prayer handbook and pray together as a group and uh, something else that we're really excited about is in this coming year uh, for our 100th anniversary we're going to be offering a lot of different resources, missions history resources, uh, special videos, even special conferences around the country. And so if you're interested in any of that material, you can reach out to me and we can uh, hook you up with all of those uh, really neat resources that'll be coming out in the next year. Great, thanks Greg. And how about 
just assistance in coordinating missionaries to speak at a local assembly or at a conference, a regional conference. That's something you can help out with? Sure. Yeah, um, I we do have a list of all the missionaries on furlough. And because of my work with security, I also get a little bit of an inside scoop as to who's coming and going around the world. And so if you're needing a missionary to speak at a, a conference or a camp or a ladies meeting, uh, you can give me a call or an email and I'm happy to see who's around. I can give you a list of recommended missionaries who are looking for meetings or might be interested. Uh, Mary Parsons is one of our resident uh, ladies conference uh, gurus and uh, she can help as well. But I, I have my fair share of knowledge about the ladies missionary stuff too from just having the lists and seeing who, who does the circuit. So we're, we're excited to help with that. We want to help with that. Please feel free to call. I probably can't you know, organize your entire year schedule, but I can give you a lot of options and, and opportunities to connect with missionaries. Something else that's been really interesting through this COVID time is the availability of missionaries for Zoom. And uh, I have a number of missionaries who have expressed interest and availability to zoom in to your chapel service for, um, well, it depends on where they are in the world, whether it's a morning or a night meeting, uh, but they're very interested and willing and excited to connect directly with assemblies in the US, uh, especially missionaries that might be in areas of the country that are very isolated from other believers. They love the fellowship with assemblies. They love uh, joining in on youth meetings and uh, prayer meetings, and you're very welcome uh, to reach out to me and I can help connect you with some of those missionaries. The last thing we've been doing is we've been having a, a monthly prayer meeting. We started out as a, a weekly and then we went to a bi-monthly and now we're down to a monthly prayer meeting as things begin to open up and you're very welcome to join us for this prayer meeting that we have with missionaries and people in the U.S. to pray together for the Lord to work around the world. Great, thanks Greg. Back to Phil. So Phil Parsons, a uh, question about mop, and you might say, what in the world? Is that what I do to clean the floor? No, this is missionary orientation program. So Phil, what is mop? Who is it for? And how can it help prospective missionaries? Well, th thanks again, John. Uh, the missionary orientation program, that's where the uh, uh, term mop comes from. Uh, it's a program that began in 1991, and it uh, it began where the uh, leaders both at MSC, our sister organization in Canada, and those at CMML were uh, trying to de determine why were some of our workers newly commended returning from the field within the first uh, six to 12 months. And it was grappling with that question that formed the uh, missionary orientation program, which is really a rather intensive one week training program uh, that is prepared for any who are seriously considering serving in a cross-cultural setting. And the range of interests can span from merely, merely exploring missions to those who are ready to go. And really the purpose uh, is to help make those first 12 to 18 months um, uh, easy in terms of sensitizing the potential worker to the crucial issues of living and making disciples in a cross-cultural environment. Hmm. That's great. Thanks for that, Phil. Heather, you're up again. Uh, so to what extent is CMML growing or shrinking? Is the number of new workers increasing or decreasing? You take care of the handbook numbers. So can you help us with that? Yes, so the Lord has faithfully called new workers to the field to help continue on the work of others that may be leaving the field. So I would say, according to the Missionary Prey Handbook, that we've remained somewhat consistent. Um, there's been a slight growth, but it seems to be somewhat equal in terms of the workers that are going as well as the workers that are coming home. Yeah, so over the last uh, month or maybe more, we've been spending some time looking at history and it's been interesting to see some of the growth times in history of more workers going out to the field and as heather said these these last few years we've we've kind of stayed pretty steady which we're very thankful for that even though many are returning from the field from retirement uh there are those replacing them uh, maybe not necessarily in the same fields 
but the numbers are staying consistent. Wouldn't it be great if the Lord were to call many more and our numbers again take the increase that it took uh, some years back as, as numbers were climbing uh, a few years ago? Maybe the Lord's calling you to serve him on a foreign field. Thanks, Heather. Uh, Sarah Dunlap, let's go back to you. So one of the questions we get from folks in the assemblies about the missions magazine is, I haven't received my October issue. Where is it? Yeah, so this is a question we get often. Um, and while missions is often thought of as a monthly magazine, it's actually published 11 times per year. Um, so each year we produce 10 monthly issues and then um, in September, October, we have one double issue. So you receive that double issue in early September and then the next issue doesn't come out until November. So that's why they don't receive it. And obviously this allows for a little less work here in the office as we prepare for the handbook, which is which come, the work of it is, is being done at that point of the year. And obviously the planning for, for the next year for the missions magazine. Um, so thanks, Sarah. Alan Coburn, you're back up. Uh, how can someone help out or donate to the upkeep of the facility? Well, yes, there are actually several ways. One of it, which we love to have as well, is you can donate your actual time and your skills, and you can come help us with some maintenance needs. We can coordinate uh, with you on that. That's an excellent way to help in that way. Uh, we also, through that, we've had schools, uh, different schools that come and do projects with uh, the students, as well as churches with their youth group and some of the older group as well, has come and done uh, projects around the facility. So that's one way of just using your abilities and skills in that way to help. Uh, there's also, if you uh, uh, desire also, you can also contact me too as well, because I also have some leads into missionaries who need help as well, and I can point you to their needs and direction as well. And then here at the facility, again, you can uh, also donate uh, money toward the capital building fund that would go directly toward projects and other specific items, i.e. tool replacement or bathroom upgrades as well. So you can ask or call me specifically or email me and uh, I could tell you what the present needs are at the time and we could uh, point you to the projects and we'd be glad to have you come help us as well. So we always welcome help. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Alan. And Jen, as you guys can tell, this is happening live. And so Jen had to jump up and take a call and she's probably someone at the door. It, it, and there's never a dull moment here at CMML. Well, Jen, question for you. What is the best way to donate to CMML? The best way to donate to CMML is whichever way is easiest for you. There are three ways to donate. One, you can send a check. Two, you can set up an EFT, which it comes, the donation that you would send would come right out of your bank account. Uh, as long as you give every month to the same missionary, which makes it a little easier on us. Um, that's the, probably the easiest way for us is to have an EFT. It's directly out of your bank account into ours, and it goes directly to the missionary's account. Uh, the third way is uh, online with your debit or credit card. You can also set up a recurring monthly donation here as well. Great, so if, if we're looking for the easiest way for work here in the office, the EFT is the way to go. Is that right, Jen? Correct. But we're always happy to handle your donation. However, uh, the best way is for you to get it. And we'll make sure that it gets to the missionary that you're donating to, or if you're donating to the operational expenses here of CML. Well, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, staff, for the, the wonderful answers. We trust that this was helpful for everyone and that this will kind of open your eyes a little bit better to how things work here and how we can best serve you. We're uh, thankful that you as whether an enabled servant out on the mission field, an engaged sender here at the home assemblies or just an enthusiastic supporter all the way around, 
We're happy to serve you as you serve the Lord.